In the previous video, we worked out three different ways to calculate confidence intervals, two for the mean and one for the variance. And here we're gonna see how to apply all three methods to the same scenario. What we've done is measured the radius of 100 cells. And from those measurements, we calculated a sample mean radius of M100, which is 5.1 microns. From prior studies, we also believe that the standard deviation in this calculation should be 0.53 microns. So what I want to do is find a confidence interval for the mean with confidence level 0.95. So what that means is I want to give an interval for the mean, and I want the probability that the sample mean plus and minus epsilon captures the true mean with probability 0.95, okay? That's what I want. So since the variance is known, the way that we calculate this kind of confidence interval is we set epsilon using this Q inverse function, okay, applied to alpha over two. And we saw that in the previous video. So if we just use this formula, we are going to get um, a confidence interval for the mean. Okay, so the first thing we do is solve for alpha over two. So one minus alpha here is 0.95. That tells us that alpha is 0 0.05 and alpha over two is 0 0.025. Okay, then the next thing is to look up the Q inverse of alpha over two. We know that in MATLAB, the way that we do that to work out Q inverse of alpha over two is just to plug in Q func inverse of whatever alpha over two is. So in this case, we plug in 0 0.025. And so we call MATLAB with exactly that argument. And it's going to tell us that this is 1.96. And you could have gotten this also from a lookup table. So there's no difference. You could do it either way. And note throughout this video, I'm more or less writing things with two uh, decimal places just as a convention, but you could do it however you feel comfortable. So you're going to solve for epsilon, which is just multiplying the standard deviation, dividing by root 100 and times 1.96, and you get 0.1 microns. So I just report that my confidence interval is 5.1 microns plus or minus 0.1 microns, or I could equivalently write that as the interval from 5 microns to 5.2 microns. Okay, so that's my confidence interval for the mean, and I have confidence level 0.95. And either way of writing this is okay. So whichever one you find more understandable is fine. You can either write it as the sample mean plus or minus the epsilon that you work out, or you can do the subtraction and addition and just report it as an interval. So whichever one you prefer to see. So now let's change the setting to say we don't know the variance. And what we did is calculated a sample variance of 0.8 microns squared. So since the variance is unknown, the way that we calculate the confidence interval is a bit different. So we use this particular choice of epsilon, calling the um, T distributions inverse CDF instead of the um, Gaussian inverse CDF, or really the complementary Gaussian inverse CDF. And what we're doing is solving for alpha over two, we get the same answer, it's the same calculation as before. We're looking up the inverse CDF function. Okay, so in MATLAB, the way that we're gonna call this is we're going to call to get the inverse CDF of a T distribution with N minus one degrees of freedom for alpha over two, we say T inverse of alpha over two N minus one. And remember here, n is 100 because we took 100 measurements, so n minus 1 is 99. And so when we plug into that, we get um, this inverse CDF of 0 0.025. So we plug in T inverse of 0 0.025.99, and we get minus 1.98. Okay, so now we're solving for epsilon, and epsilon actually is going to multiply by minus here, then take the uh, square root of the sample variance, divide by, by uh, root n, times this value that we got above, we get 0.18 microns. So what we're getting is 5.1 plus or minus 0.18 microns, which I could also write as this interval by adding and subtracting that value. That's a confidence interval for the mean with confidence level 0.95. Okay, so now what if I'm in the same setting where I didn't know the variance, but what I wanna know is a confidence interval for that variance. Okay, so I already have the sample variance. I already know how many measurements I took, I want confidence level 0.95. So the formula we derived in the previous video looked something like this. We had to calculate beta one and beta two, 
multiply those by the sample variance, and that gave us our interval. We have to pick 1 minus alpha as our confidence level. We're just going to keep that throughout as 0.95. So we solve for alpha over 2. That again is going to give the same answer we've had throughout. It's going to be 0.025. And we also need 1 minus alpha over 2, which is 0.975 in this example. I need to look up two values from this inverse CDF. In MATLAB, the way that I call this inverse CDF is I'm looking to find the inverse CDF of a chi-squared with n minus 1 degrees of freedom at z. So I say chi 2 inverse of z and comma n minus 1. So I'm going to plug that in for both um, 0.975 and I have to plug in 99 because that's 100 minus 1, right? And I get 128.42. I do the same thing plugging in 0.025 and I get this chi to in function where I plug in 0.025 and 99, and I get 73.36. Okay, and so finally, I'm gonna solve for beta one and beta two. So according to that formula up there, I have n minus one, which is 99, divided by 128.42, that's 0.77. And for beta two, I do the same calculation, but use 73.36, I get 1.35. So 0.77 times my sample vari variance up to 1.35 times my sample variance is my confidence interval. I can work out what those multiplications are, and I get 0.62 up to 1.08 micron squared as a confidence interval for the variance with confidence level 0.95. And again, remember that the way that this works is that when we're calculating um, these confidence intervals for unknown variance, we're kind of assuming that the data is well approximated by Gaussian, and that's something that happens in practice all the time, but it's just important to know that that's an assumption that you're making. And if you're really far away from that assumption, maybe you could find a different way to calculate confidence intervals.